Hey everyone, it's future me. So everything you're about to see after this, I've already filmed, cut, edited, and it's pretty much ready to go. You can see my cameras sitting here. And I just want to urge you to stick around until the test towards the end of the video. There's an important lesson to be learned. It was completely an error on my part that could have easily been prevented. And I just want to make everyone else aware and try and save you from the same mistake. With that being said, enjoy the video and stick around till the end to see the test and watch for a follow-up video on what happens in the test. What's up everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today we're gonna work on the shop press that I started probably about a year ago and never finished. So unfortunately I don't have any footage of actually building what you see here because I did that before I started my YouTube channel. But we're going to finish it. I haven't tested this thing at all, so we're going to do that as well. And we're going to finish this up and get it at least to the point where I can use it. And I say use it because it does need to be painted and everything, but we're getting into winter. I really don't like painting in the garage in the winter time because it starts to make the house smell and things like that. So we're going to get it to a usable point. I'm probably going to wait to do the prep work and paint in the spring or if we happen to get some nice days this winter. So let me give you a quick rundown of what we have here so far and then we'll talk about what I still need to do. This is all 3 16 tubing, all scrap metal that I've acquired from various places. This part here that the jack is sitting on is quarter inch angle as well as the bridge. These pins are 5 8 implement hitch pins from a farm store and this bottom is some pretty beefy uh, truck frame channel. So this is all pretty solid. It should be more than enough for what I plan to do with it. In the middle here we've got the 20 ton Pittsburgh Jack from Harbor Freight. This is the air over uh, hydraulic version so I can hook it up to the air compressor and use it that way. But I also left the manual pump accessible and it'll clear out here with the extension on there just in case I need to finesse anything. So up in here we've got the original springs from the jack that are just on some loops that I made with the Eastwood rod bender and welded on and then I've got the plate from the jack that the springs are originally attached to welded up here just to hold this jack in place when there's no pressure on it to keep it from falling out. One thing that I do wish I would have done a little bit differently this distance here between the upright posts is not the same size as a store-bought 20 ton press. That means that there are certain things that this is just a little too narrow for like the swag press brake and things like that. I can't actually fit the 20 ton version in here if I wanted to. There's a plate here that has a bunch of keeper screws welded through tabs that just hold this jack when it's lifting to bring this back up with it. But other than that, this is completely 100% removable. So if I need to take it out for any reason to replace it or repair it or use it in other situations, I'm backing out these screws and it'll come right out. So all that's left to do to get this ready to use is I've got some end plates for the end of this tube here. That's just purely cosmetic to close up the ends. And then my system for attachments in this press, I'm hoping works out. It may not, but I've basically got a one inch grade eight bolt that I have cut the head off of. There's a nut welded on the underside below the jack here in the center. And it just threads in there. And then my idea is that since this bolt's bottomed out on this bridge that the jack is on, the weight's gonna be transferred to the body of that bolt and not the threads. I have a bunch of one inch nuts that I can weld things to or otherwise attach things to and bottom out against the other end of this bolt. So hopefully none of the pressure will be placed onto the threads, although they should handle it anyways, being one inch and grade eight. I just figured I'd be safe and get everything to bottom out on the actual body of the bolt instead of the threads. I need to make some sort of plate for here at least to start with and this will allow me to make different attachments. The only issue with going this route as long as everything works and holds is that I need to be cautious of the orientation of whatever I weld to these nuts. Because it's threaded on it's going to spin so I need to make sure that if I say wanted to weld a rectangle plate on here like this that when it's threaded on it is parallel 
to the bridge below it and not off center. So that'll be something that's a little bit tricky, but hopefully if everything works out, it will be worth it because I can readily get these nuts at a hardware store. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to come up with a different system. I don't have a mill or a lathe, so I'm really trying to not get into machining any collars with set screws and things like that. Another thing I may do is I have these big casters from my US General Toolbox. I couldn't put them on the toolbox in order to fit it under my workbench, so I saved them and I think I may put them on here. It's gonna raise this up several inches and make it a little more comfortable to use. And it's also gonna make moving it around pretty easy. So here's a bit of a close up so you can see what's going on a little bit better. This is the 20 ton Harbor Freight air over hydraulic jack. Here we've got some quarter inch angle that is reinforced in between here, 90 degrees to the rest of the press. And then down here we've got the bridge that you're gonna put whatever you're pressing on. And it is quarter inch angle as well. There's a set, two pieces doubled up here welded as well as back here and then it is braced in this direction as well. So this should be pretty sturdy, especially for what I plan on doing. I honestly don't plan on pressing a lot of things. I want to be able to use dimple dies and things like that. So hopefully what I've done here will be uh, more than enough. So here are the end plates I've got that are gonna go in here and get welded in. I do need to finish weld this one outer joint here. I kind of figured until I did these, there wasn't a point in doing that and cleaning everything up. So I need to do those as well. And these are just gonna sit in there. I had my brother cut these on a CNC plasma he's got access to. So these fit just about perfect with enough gap to have the weld go somewhere. I've already got this piece of truck channel at the bottom that's got a decent lip on it. I may just put a plate across the end on either end and then use that for storage. And that's about it. So all I really need to do is get this thing welded up. I'm gonna use the Simder MiG 140 to get this thing welded in here. If you wanna see a video on that, check out the card I'm posting up above. So everyone just saw me weld in those end caps and get everything ground down. I also decided not to do anything with the wheels for now because it's going to be more difficult to lay this thing down or flip it upside down with everything in it than it will be when I have it taken apart to paint in the future. The only thing left to do is to make something to go on one of those one inch nuts. What I decided to do is just cut a plug out with this two inch hole saw. I'm going to weld that to the nut, grind it down so that it is the same size as the nut, and use that for testing purposes. That way I don't have to worry about orientation when it's threaded on there, and it's just simple and quick to be able to test this thing. I don't want to put a bunch of time into something that's not going to work. If this all works out well and I'm cool with the way I have this set up, then I'll put more time into making some more attachments. But for testing purposes, this is what we're going to go with. This is just some like 10 gauge, it's in between 10 gauge and 3 16 plate. So it's not strong on its own, that's why I'm gonna make it the size of the nut and then all the weight's gonna be transferred through the bolt. And this is just gonna give us a flat surface to use for pressing and testing. So if you guys have never seen these spider hole saws, watch how easy it is to get this plug out. That is why I love these hole saws because you don't have to get a screwdriver or a tool in there to get anything out. So I'm gonna let that plug cool off for a minute and we'll come back to it. All right, so there's our plug that we're gonna weld onto the nut. Just gotta get it cleaned up and get it welded on. Well, I was gonna grind this down, but as you can see with it centered, since we're going by the inside diameter of that hole saw, it actually fits pretty good. So I think I'm just gonna get this welded on here on a few sides and then we're gonna go ahead and test this thing. I don't see any reason to grind that down. So I got the plate welded onto the nut. That's just that plug we cut out welded straight on there. I did not end up grinding it down because it was about the perfect size by the time you got a bead of weld around it. And 
I'm going to throw this on there. I do need to get some anti-seize. I'm out right now. But I do want to put some on the threads just to keep things free in case it does get any pressure. But I've already threaded this on and it does bottom out. I can tell because we still got that hole from the pilot bit in the bottom. So it does bottom out. Hopefully all the weight gets transferred to the body of the bolt and not the threads. I'm going to get this put on there and then I've got some 2 by 3 3 16 wall tubing we're going to do a couple pieces of. I don't really have anything else here at the moment to test it on. This is a piece of scrap. We're going to test one of these this way and then we're going to test one up and down. This one is a little bit wider as well. Um, but we're just going to use these to test it, make sure everything works and see what happens. And I will look for some other things to test it with in the future. So first one's going to be the horizontal 2x3 tubing, so 2 inches tall, 3 inches long. I'm going to keep this camera rolling, but I do have my other camera set up over here for a close-up shot, so we'll probably switch over to that. good until it obviously the bridge came apart and what happened was I forgot that I never finish welded the one side I was working on this project probably over a year ago at this point was the last time I was working on this and I didn't go back and check everything and I just never got around to finish welding the one side of the bridge it's been you know a year or so I didn't remember that I did that so that's why that came apart. It was just tack welded in place. Luckily, nothing super bad happened. I've got it all welded back together and I added some more welds to reinforce it. But I do think in the future, I am going to come up with a different bridge. So let's get a test done on this and hopefully it'll stay together this time. So this is the same 3 16 tubing that we were talking about before. I've only got one piece left right now. We're going to test it with this and that'll kind of be the end of this particular video. You're going to be seeing this quite a bit in some future projects. I'm also going to do a, another video on what happened with this bridge. Um, so I'll put a link to that up above here. It's going to be probably where my head is um, when I get that video completed. But it's going to be a separate video talking about that specific instance and some other things to keep in mind when you're working on hobby projects. So with that being said, let's run this down and see how it goes. see it had no trouble at all getting it to this um, I didn't want to run it all the way down because there is still a gap in between those two pieces I don't have any plates so for now that's as far as we're gonna run it I did run another piece this is actually the piece from the video where the bridge came apart uh, I finished smashing it all the way and it worked out just fine so I'm pretty confident in this now. Like I said, I still believe I'm going to come up with another bridge idea. But for all intents and purposes, this will do dimple dies and things like that at this point. So I hope this video helps you guys even with the mishaps. I wanted to leave that in here. I want to be transparent, be honest. Things happen. Uh, everything can teach you something. So I definitely learned from that. And another video, like I said earlier, I'm going to go over some of the things I'm going to do to prevent that from happening again. 
and just some general things to keep in mind with these hobby projects you may get pulled away from for you know potentially quite a long time so watch out for that video um the bridge i think i'm going to get a solid piece uh, i've got another few pieces of this channel and i may cut just a notch and get some longer pins or next weekend i'm getting 220 installed in the garage finally my dad's gonna come and help me do that i'll be able to use the plasma cutter at its full capacity so i'll be able to plasma cut this 5 16 and notch it out i could grind it that's how i did anything before this uh, that's actually these piece this piece up here is a piece of 5 16 frame channel like this that i cut out from that piece right here you can do it with a grinder uh, it takes a long time it's super messy but it can be done and i just want to show you guys that you can really do some cool projects with just some basic tools the only tools i use on this were a welder which is just a basic flux core or stick welder i use both on this depending on where it was and then just an angle grinder and some flap disc for these up here i used a, an eastwood rod bender but this could have just as easily been done around a piece of pipe or something like that or even in a vise you could have also just gotten a piece of chain and used a couple links from a piece of chain welded up here so all of this was done with very basic tools and free metal everything was free except the jack and then the two pins that hold the bridge nothing else was paid for on this machine hope you guys learned something hope you like it and you'll be seeing it quite a bit more in the future i'll do some updates as i modify change and paint this machine and we'll see you next time